Hey guys, it's Shortcakey. How you doing? Hope you're doing good. Today, I have for you 20 horrific true crimes that will keep you up at night. Let's be honest. We all enjoy a little bit of horror, especially when it comes to stories and movies, don't we? But if that is taken to another level where it actually scares the hell out of you, will you still come forward to try it? This, of course, involves real life stories, especially chilling tales of gruesome murders. After all, what can be scarier than knowing that some of these killers are still out there and that there are no boundaries to how scary humans can be? So, how far can you endure the chills down your spine? If you are weak at heart, back off right away. Because what I have today is not for everyone. These are graphic stories. I've gathered 20 of the most creepy stories to get you an extra extreme adrenaline rush and long-lasting goosebumps. So dim your lights, but don't turn them off. Get inside your sheets, get comfy, take a deep breath, and let's begin today's creepy ride. Coming in at number 20, we have the Candyman, Dean Arnold Coral. Dean Arnold Coral along with his teenage accomplices, was responsible for the kidnapping, raping, torturing, and murdering of at least 28 boys in the years between 1970 to 1973 in Houston, Texas. He was known as the Candy Man because he owned a candy shop and would allure kids using candies and then abduct them. He'd coax them in his van by tempting them about some false party or offer them free rides to their homes. When somebody resisted, he'd force drugs through candies or grab them. After raping his victims, he'd kill them by often strangling them or shooting them with a 22 caliber pistol and bury them after wrapping their bodies in plastic. Number 19 we have David, son of Sam Berkowitz. Now, that is one name that you don't expect to be associated with a serial killer. David Richard Berkowitz is an American serial killer who is also known as the son of Sam and the 44 caliber killer. He committed several shooting attacks in the span of one year. His victims include seven injured people and six who ended up dead. He even went on to threaten the NYPD through several letters, but he was soon caught and sentenced to six consecutive life sentences. He confessed that he was part of a satanic cult and was carrying out ritualistic murders. He even went on to say that his neighbor's dog was possessed by a demon and that it was the dog who asked David to carry out his killings. Number 18. The Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. Ricardo Leva Munoz Ramirez was known by multiple different aliases, among which the famous ones were the Night Stalker, the Walk-In Killer, the Valley Intruder. He was responsible for killing somewhere between 13 to 17 people. Initially, 
he'd walk into the house of his victims and kill them in a simple manner, but by the end of his killing spree, his methods had turned into more gruesome ones. One of his victims had a T carved on her left breast, and her eyes were taken out by him. Another victim had a pentagram drawn with lipstick on her thigh. Some of them had their throats sliced open after they had been sodomized. When investigating his madness, it was found that his cousin Mike had shown Richard pictures of tortured humans, especially beheaded women. Moreover, when Richard was thirteen, he saw Mike kill his wife, and Richard ended up in a pool of blood of Mike's wife. Number 17 the entire family of serial killer called Bloody Benders. The Bloody Benders were a family of serial killers who lived in Labette County, Kansas, or Labette County, Kansas, and performed killings during the years between 1972 and 1978. They were a family consisting of John Bender, his wife, and two kids, who would seem like any other normal family on the outside. However, the Benders had a way of inviting people to their place for dinner. They had a special chair which was placed on a trap door and they would make the victims sit on it. The wife had skills to keep the guests distracted, allowing the husband to strike the guest with a hammer and the kids to slit open the guest's throat. The trap door was then opened in order to dump the body, which was later unburied in a faraway location. Number 16. John Wayne Gacy, the Murdering Clown. John Wayne Gacy Jr. was an American serial killer and rapist who lived in Chicago. He carried out his killings between the years of 1972 and 1978. He used to dress up as a clown, I believe it was Pogo the Clown, to visit fundraisers and kids' parties to perform for the little ones. However, little did the parents know that there was a sadistic monster hidden behind the jolly-looking clown. He abducted around 33 teenage boys and young men. After sexually assaulting and killing them, he'd bury the bodies in his home, in the crawl space, and out on his property. He was executed in May 1994 for his heinous crimes. This, number 15. The serial killer who inspired all the horror movies. Edward Theodore Gein was an American murderer and body snatcher. He was also known as the Butcher of Plainfield. He killed two women in a span of three years. He is regarded as one of the most horrible killers in history of mankind since he used to visit graveyards to dig out bodies and make trophies and other stuff to decorate the house from bones, flesh, and skin. When his home was searched, the authorities found such horrific sights in there that it would make anyone shiver in horror. There were chairs covered in human skin, a lampshade made from facial skin, ten women's heads peeled off on the top, bowls, made of skulls, noses, two heads in bags, a belt that was made from female nipples, and nine volve placed in a box. Many horror movie characters are inspired from him, such as Norman Bates, Leatherface, and Buffalo Bill. Number 14 Murdering Victims for Satanic Ritual Robin, Robin Gett, Gett 
was an American killer who murdered 18 people in the time span between May 23, 1981 to October 8, 1982. Robin made a group of homicidal associates, and together they were known as the Ripper Crew, or the Chicago Rippers. They often drove on the streets of Chicago in search for prostitutes whom they could easily abduct. After abducting them in their vans, they would bring them to guest apartments where they'd sacrifice them in a horrible, satanic manner. They cut off their breasts and eat them while Get would read from the satanic Bible. They also claimed to have raped the victims. Number 13. The Real Life Boogeyman Albert Fish Hamilton Howard Fish was a serial killer who was also known as the Gray Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Maniac, and the Boogeyman. He began killing in 1920, and his victims were mostly African-Americans and mentally disabled kids. His weapons included the butcher knife, meat cleaver, and bone saw. One of the most brutal murders he committed was that of Grace Budd, who was only 10 years old. Six years after killing her, Fish wrote a letter to her mother telling her how he killed her. He choked her to death and then cut her parts, cooked them, and ate them. He even went on praising the taste of the flesh, telling her it took him nine days to finish it. The original Hannibal Lecter. And coming in at number 12, we have Dr. Henry Holmes, who murdered hotel guest. Herman Webster Mudgett was an American serial killer who was more notorious during the 19th century. He's more commonly known as Dr. Henry Howard Holmes or H. H. Holmes. He owned a hotel in Chicago and his guests were the victims. Not only were the guests his victims, but also his female employees. He would often employ creative methods of killing his victims as he would lock them in rooms filled with gas. This would be done in the bank vault he had next to his room where he could carry out the gruesome act and let his guests suffocate. There was a secret chute in the hotel that would transfer bodies from the bank vault to the basement where he removed the flesh from the skin and from the bones and sell the skeleton to local medical schools. Number 11 we have the charming serial killer Ted Bundy. If there is one serial killer name that a lot of people seem to be familiar with it's Ted Bundy. Theodore Robert Bundy was an American serial killer who would rape and torture young women and then kill them in cold blood. He also happened to be a necrophile. He had well over 30 victims and his reign of terror lasted through the 1970s. By the looks of him, it was hard to think of him as a killer. He would exploit women using his charm and good looks. Once their trust was earned, he'd take them to a place to forlorn and murder them there. Later on, he'd have sex with the dead bodies regardless of whether they were rotten or fresh. At home, he kept around 12 beheaded heads and keepsakes. In the end, he probably got what he deserved after he was executed via electric chair at Rayford Prison, Stark, Florida. Number 10. The Gruesome Goodhart Murders The Robinson family murders, also known as the Goodhart Murders, were the mass murders of Richard Robinson, his wife Shirley Robinson, and their four children, Richie, Gary, Randy, and Susan, on June 25, 1968. All members were shot using 22 caliber and 25 caliber guns by an intruder 
and investigators also told that a hammer was used to assault Susan and Richard. Nobody to date knows who the actual killer was, although 15 months of investigation led suspicion laid suspicion on Richard's employee Joseph R. Scalaro, who tried to lie during investigations, but later on committed suicide. He left behind a note that said he did lie, but didn't murder anyone. Number 9. The West Mesa Bone Collector the West Mesa murders case alludes to the killing of 11 women who were found years later in 2009 buried in the desert of New Mexico, United States. The investigations of the case did not go good and still remains to a mystery to this day and as to actually kills them. It's suspected that it was, a, it was a serial killer. The remains of the victims were found by a developer who was building a storage wall on the site. All the women were killed in the span from 2001 to 2005. The serial killer is still on the loose. And we can only hope that he doesn't go scot-free. Number 8. The Story of the Frankfurt Slasher The usual theme of serial killer continues with this fellow here, as well which involves murder, sexual assault, and a whole bunch of crazy and horrible stuff. Leonard Christopher was the name of this American serial killer who performed crimes in the neighborhood of Frankfurt in, Phil in, Frankfurt in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was also known as the Frankfurt Slasher. He killed eight to nine people in the span from 1985 to 1990. He was also known to first sexually assault his victims and then murder them. As a result of his crimes, he was sentenced to life in prison. Number seven. Mysterious Watcher makes New Jersey family flee. The Watcher, as named by the media and the Watcher himself, is an unknown person or entity, entity who claims to be the owner of a house in New Jersey. It all started when a couple moved into the house and started receiving mysterious letters from the Watcher. The letters contained sinister remarks and threats for the couple to leave. The lines written in the letter are sure disturbing and strange, especially the mention of young blood. Some of the mentions from the letters are, It is now my time. Why are you here? I will find out. Now that they have it to flaunt it, they pay the price. I asked the woods to bring me young blood. One of the other three letters said, Who am I? Or, Who am I? I am the Watcher, and I have been in control of the home for the better part of two decades now. The former residents of the house also received the same letters when they were present there, but they kept it from their customers because they wanted to get rid of the house so bad. Number six, a house full of animal carcasses. It was in 2011 when the Bretzis family decided to get themselves a new house. Before moving in, they had a good look at the both interior and exterior of the house, but later on, when they finally moved in, things went bad for them real quick. They found dead animals stuffed in the walls of their new house. Not just this, 
the dead animals were wrapped in old newspapers from the 1930s to 1940s in different species or spices. It was said that these animals were used in a kind of magic to heal ailments at the time. It was even said that the house was possessed. Nevertheless, the family got the house renovated and continued to live there. Quite a brave move, if you ask me. Number five, the infamous Zodiac Killer. The Zodiac Killer claims to have taken 37 lives, among which five are said to be confirmed dead. He was a serial killer who took lives in the span of the 1960s to the 1970s. He committed the most gruesome murders at Lake Berryessa in Napa County, California on September 27, 1969. His victims at the time were two Pacific Union College students who saw him advancing towards them wearing a black hood, sunglasses, and a white bib. He then ordered the girl to tie her boyfriend with the help of clothesline while he claimed to be a convict who just escaped. She complied after which he tied the girl up as well and stabbed both of them repeatedly until they died. The really scary part about this whole story is that the identity of the Zodiac Killer remains unknown to this day. Number four, eight months pregnant wife is murdered by husband. And I know y'all are all familiar with this one. Scott Lee Peterson is an American killer and a prisoner. He's convicted of murdering his wife, Lacey Peterson, who was eight months pregnant in Modesto, California in 2002. She was expected to deliver a baby boy next month, whom they planned on naming Connor but she went missing on the 24th of December, 2002. He initially made up a story of her disappearance, but soon enough brought suspicion upon himself. Investigations carried on, and on April 14, 2003, sorry, a fetus was found in San Francisco Bay, where Peter was seen boating on the day of the disappearance. Next day, Lacey's torso, without hands, feet, and head, appeared at the same place. This led to Scott being arrested, and now he is on death row in San Quentin State Prison, California. He was sentenced to death through lethal injection. And at number three, we have Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Andrew Borden, an American woman who killed her father and stepmother in Fall River, Massachusetts in 1892 and was prosecuted for it. She was her father's only child. She was mostly unhappy with her father's treatment, like he killed her pigeon, which she was very fond of, using an axe for he thought it attracted intruders into his barn. He got married to her stepmother, Abby, after the death of her real mother. That infuriated Lizzie, and she refused to call Abby her mother. Reaching her cracking point, Lizzie took an axe and struck her father's head ten times in his sleep, splitting his one eyeball into half. She then went for her stepmother and killed her with the same tool by 19 strikes. She was arrested, but then let go, for the evidence was not enough. Lizzie lied throughout the investigation. Police later on found axes and hatches in their basement. Number two, Christy Pike. Krista Pike, or Krista Gale Pike, is the youngest woman to be sentenced to death for killing her class fellow. She was 18 when she murdered her, 
Krista loved Tadra or Tadra Tara Tadra ship or just to say T ship can't say her name <laughs> whom she met through a program that helped lower income kids another fellow student Colleen Schlimmer began talking to ship too much and that infuriated Krista she then conspired against her with her friends including ship and brought her to a vacant steam plant where Slimmer was brutally tortured for 30 minutes by them they carved a pentagram on her chest sliced her up and lastly Krista crushed her skull with an asphalt slab and took a piece to show it to her fellow classmates. Next day and later on, all of them were arrested. And number one, Ricky Casso murders 17 year old friend. Richard Allen Casso Jr., 17, murdered his 17-year-old friend Gary Lars, along with two friends in North Port, New York, on June 16, 1984. At the time of the murder, he, along with friends and Lars, was high on mescaline. They were in the woods practicing occult stuff. Long before this, Lars had stolen PCP from Casso, and ever since that, they had bad blood. While making fire, Casso teased Lars about how they should make fire using Lars' hair, which led to a fight. For two to three hours, Casso and his friends stabbed Lars 36 times, burned his body, took out his eyeballs, and stuffed his throat with rocks. While they were covering his body with branches, thinking him to be dead, Lars woke up and they attacked him again until he was confirmed dead. Later on, Casso and his friends were arrested. Two days later, Casso hung himself in the jail. Well guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this creepy little video. If y'all did, leave a like comment don't forget to subscribe share follow me on twitter or instagram love you guys smooches and hugs